Whoa, my God, what is this? What is this? This is easily one of the ugliest CG animations I have ever seen in any kind of real production. I mean, who allowed this? Who distributed this? How many people did this have to go through to all be approved? Man, Nintendo could just seriously never get a break. You may be familiar with this series, or at least to a minor extent, maybe. Remember that one image of a weird booty Donkey Kong? Yeah, that's from this. No, I don't know what they were thinking either. This is Donkey Kong Country, a TV show from the 90s that is literally as old as I am. It first aired in France on September 4th, 1996. I was probably literally 10 hours old at the time. And boy, has it not aged well at all. Now, I've had an awfully chunky backlog this year, thanks to prepping for double uploads for two months straight, but this is officially the first video made directly thanks to the suggestions page on our Discord. So you can thank Tanzanite the Terrible for this episode. More suggestions will be popping up soon enough. Now, this ain't a quick 90 minute experience. There's 26 episodes in the first season. And yes, there's a second season too. But we're not gonna cover absolutely everything today. If you remember our old boss baby video from almost a year ago, we're covering the same kind of structure here, skimming across the entire series to capture the general feel of the arc. So you think you know Donkey Kong? I assure you, you don't. The show is based off of the 1994's Donkey Kong Country, so here's a question for you. Where did that game take place? Did you think it was Donkey Kong Island? No, you fool. The right answer was actually, in all of Congo Bongo. Congo Bongo. And what's DK's most treasured thing? Was it a horde of bananas that King K ruled and the Kremlin stole? No! Coconut Crystal. Coconut. Every episode is about the crystal coconut. We're gonna be covering three episodes today. The first one, the last one, and one right in the middle of the series. And to spice things up a little, we'll be switching between the three so it won't feel like you're dragging yourself through an elongated, borderline repetitive cycle. It's not as fun as you'd imagine, in order. So episode one is Bad Hair Day. Oh yeah, I think when you're in this universe, uh, every day is Bad Hair Day. It establishes our main character, starting off with Cranky Kong rocking out at the organ, as he's obviously known to do. What's a record player? And singing to us about who he is. Yes, this is also somewhat a musical too, though it honestly sounds like an unpracticed Doofenshmirtz is singing at us. Anyway, he introduces the Crystal Coconut, expositioning how it does anything, it fulfills wishes, powers things, tells fortunes, etc, and whoever has it, rules. And there's Donkey Kong. Free him. Fabled to be the future king of Congo Bongo, all muscle and no brains. Oh god, that animation! You can practically see the keyframes and boy do they stretch these models out. Both on DK's eyebrow expressions and all of Cranky's mouth. Cranky also shows us King K. Rule, who ironically is like way better modeled than all the Kongs. The big daddy of evil. Yeah, sure, I guess that's one way to describe him, but why? And he's just walking right up to Cranky's house, telling the troops to seize the coconut. And apparently they have guns with clap traps in them? And boy, do they look ugly. That guy's body's not even moving. So they fire at Cranky's house and attack like termites, and the animation on it just gets worse. But this is a regular thing. You actually get used to it. So Cranky calls for Donkey Kong. Hey, Diddy. Come on up, little buddy. Why does he sound like that? I've heard all sorts of grunts and calls from him before, but I never would have pictured his voice to be this. But I mean, it's awfully 90s. And Diddy is the cautious one? Isn't he supposed to be like childish and feisty and like a bit of a prankster? Now he's the adult in the room? Okay. So they hear Cranky's call and head on over, crashing onto barrel buttons to fling the troops away. It's goofy and really easy, but I like the animation of them all in the air. And King K sounds... Posh? Donkey Kong! Did he, um... <laughs> These voice directions are whack. Also, this shot is literally just a screenshot of Diddy and DK. What an animation. But let's move on a little in the series now that we've established the basic Kongs and their terrible animation. Episode 13, The Curse of Congo Bongo dead center in the series. Skipping the likes of Booty and the Beast. I think we've all seen enough booty already. And that booty gets shown in every single intro sequence in these episodes. It just burns into memory, doesn't it? So this episode starts off with Donkey Kong admiring himself in the mirror at home before discovering a mysterious letter telling of a curse on the island for reading it twice. Meanwhile, Dixie Kong has now been established. Hey, Dix. <laughs> ah, 
I don't know if I've just gotten used to the <clears throat> style by this point, but her model sort of doesn't seem too bad. And she's getting flying lessons from Funky Kong. Boy, does he not translate too well into this world. Looks like he's got spoons on his eyes or something. Funky almost crashes his plane because apparently he can literally fly in his sleep. And that's the joke. And they get on with their lesson. Gliding the aerial tide is a cerebral journey into an altered state. You know, I'm kind of not surprised at this point there's a random Jamaican accent in there. But for these two, at least their voices kind of match up to their characters. Anyway, as the plot continues, King K is in his lair. Now with the usual two henchmen from before, Clump and Crusher. One being a general type and one being all muscle. And now there's this parrot, Polly Roger, who's entirely original for this animated series. They came from a pirate in Booty and the Beast, ironically, called Captain Scurvy, but he looks like a cannon. That's not important. With the henchmen failing to come up with a plan because they literally can't decipher their own code somehow, K Rule sends out Polly Roger instead. Though not before King K looks like he's bubbling under the skin or something and Polly Roger moves every bone in their model. Did I mention this animation is weird? Still, I know I've only shown you one loss and skipped 12 episodes so far, but King K at this point just seems so defeated. Just hurry. So with that establishment out of the way, clearly there's a decline for DK over this arc and the running theme each episode is always trying to get that coconut. How does the finale of the season try to wrap everything together? Well, this one is a thin line between love and ape. It's a love story, but not really an ending for the series in any fashion. You'll see. So episode 26 we're on now starts with a barrel helicopter. I don't know how technology works on Congo Bongo, but it hosts our final two main characters. Candy Kong, who you'll probably know as Donkey Kong's girlfriend love interest, translating from a relatively humanoid voluminous monkey into, oh my God, what did they do to her? That's terrible, was meth involved? And alongside her is an original abomination that we'll never see done right, Bluster Kong having an attempt of human hair growth on his apely body. I mean, what was going on in the designer's room? Anyway, this scene is pretty upfront, with Bluster clearly being interested in Candy and grumpy that DK has her despite him owning a helicopter and a factory, which employs Candy in the first place, so this is a really inappropriate conversation between colleagues. Candy upfront rejects Bluster, stating that she's Donkey Kong's girl, and after a goofily poor landing, Candy is swept away by Diddy and Donkey Kong pretty quickly. It's interesting because in the background of this whole scene, it's not like Bluster is animated badly from a technical standpoint, but the direction for him is just so incredibly obtuse, like, like it's an amateur theatre play. It's just so over the top. And hey, you know the drill at this point. If you haven't already, do subscribe. Only you can help balance out my skewed unsub ratio count and be very glad that I didn't go incredibly hardcore on this costume. I could have done, I didn't. If you do want to see the show for yourself though, it's available on Amazon Prime. This isn't an advert, it's just the theme of the week. Fred was available on Amazon Prime and so is this and we're going to continue it into Twitch.tv. We're doing a watch party today, pretty much when this video has come out, maybe an hour or two afterwards, where basically we're either going to watch Metal Tornado, another terrible film that I just found in the, uh, in the Amazon Prime library, or we can always just watch season two of this. So come join me, we'll react to it live, make some jokes, have a fun time. Maybe, we'll see. So if you're interested in that, then come on over. I'll see you there, or not. So Bluster in his envious ways realizes that though DK is confirmed as future king, Candy is not confirmed as future queen and wants to get a wish of his own from the magical coconut. Yes, this episode too surrounds this random MacGuffin they invented. Need to get Candy to love me. Ugh, was that supposed to be an eyebrow raise? That doesn't translate at all. Meanwhile, we're back at King K's lair again and now he has a broken arm. Don't worry, you haven't missed anything. It was from the events Diddy and DK were describing this episode. He's attacking his goons again in anger, and so off they go, I guess. And Bluster makes it to Cranky's place, telling him that DK and Candy went to Orchid Valley, where it's apparently poisonous this time of year, forcing Cranky to leave. And just leave you here all along with the coconut. I sneeze till it hurts. Wow, Cranky's actually right on the money. Smart chimp. And then he goes anyway. What fantastic writing. Anyway, you see where this is going. Bluster goes to the coconut and it teaches him how to make a love potion. All the while, King K's troops are spying on him and learning about it themselves. You know, I've kind of been skipping a lot of the jokes in this show, but they're really not very good. 
Some are just neutral in concept, and the rest is just a bit of slapstick. Whoa, I'm falling over! Let's flip back round to episode 1 to see what's going on. With King K defeated for the very first time, he's now returned to his lair, telling of how the bananas give DK strength, and that they need to cast a curse on him. Which is apparently a thing available in this world in a book right nearby. How convenient! There he learns that cutting Donkey Kong's hair will strip him of all his power. Time to make a plan. And DK is admiring himself in front of the mirror. This is strangely a running theme. It's Candy's birthday today and DK wants to meet up with her. But first, preparations need to be made. And honestly, as I'm watching this, I don't think as a kid I'd understand what's going on. The audio is so, I guess, poor in execution that when the show tries to do some interesting direction, I don't think it really sells. Like this bit. If only I could get her away from it's a sentence finishing transition, but I can barely register what Cranky's saying. And again, he's randomly just up there for that goofy falling over joke. This is the factory where Bluster builds those barrels, and Cranky's in the machine for the goofs. He's expositioning Buster and the factory, but it is boring. Is this really for kids? So, try not to get too confused, it's another Candy and Bluster scene, but predating everything. Bluster has a cake for Candy, and she's not interested. Watching my figure. Don't bother, I'm watching it for ya. Ew. Bluster invites Candy to his place and she's got other plans with an appearing Donkey Kong. Why is he on the conveyor belt now? Ah, whatever. And then there's this whole story beat of Candy getting spattered with cake, but it literally makes no cinematic sense. It was stopped before and was never shown reversing. Bluster walked away, but now suddenly he's back, so did he splatter her in frustration? So then, why is Donkey Kong being blamed for it now? Like, what? Also, it's musically played off with this trumpety whine. He already got one. Donkey Kong? What a sound design. Meanwhile, King K's troops have built a robot clone of Candy. I don't know where they got the technology of the Inspector Gadget, but clearly I don't understand the rules of Congo Bongo. Also, this Candy then goes off on a musical number. Kind of. The voice actors just kind of sing, and there's music with it, and like a dancing rig, but there's no real direction or visual play for it. This apparently happens twice per episode. And King K is ecstatic that this clone can now cut DK's hair, which she promptly does as Diddy watches in horror and disappears just as quickly. Oh no, geek alert. Yes, because as we all know, geeks are famously bald on the head. And you'll never guess what happens next. King K crashes Cranky's crib recurrently in an encore. Crusher is sent to go forth. DK makes his reappearance and is promptly pounded. K Rule gets the coconut and just walks away with it. Ever since Candy cut my hair and told me she wanted to make me her little love slave. I'm sorry, this was allowed in a kid's show? Are you serious? The 90s were a different world, weren't they? Ugh. This gorilla's got some genuine hormones running in him. Also, what's Diddy been doing this whole time? Well, with the meat of the story out of the way, let's peek on over to episode 13 again. So, Polly Rogers been sent on their mission, and over at Cranky's place, he's going crazy over that mysterious letter, distraught that the other Kongs got one too, telling of the legend that every 100 years, the ghost of pirate Bluebeard Baboon delivers the curse of the double doubloon. Reading it twice causes total island-wide doom, and DK's already read it once, and the coconut crystal is already losing power. One more read and the coconut fades and the island sinks like a ship. This honestly sounds more like finale talk than the actual season finale. Uh, now it's time for a song, right? Well, either way, Donkey Kong now just goes off on the most out of context dance number about how they could all be doomed. It's really, really bad. I, I still don't even understand why these are even a thing. It's not like this is inspired by the DK rap, it predates it. And like, it doesn't even have a satisfying ending. W what is this? Does it make more sense in French? So DK and Diddy run off to find every ape on the island who've gotten the same letter. King K's troops haven't made much progress on their plan, and the guy's even contemplating if he wants the coconut that badly. Though of course, that's not going anywhere. Diddy and DK first get to Funky and Dixie on their flying lesson, telling them not to read the letters on the radio that is disrupted enough to sound like they're saying the opposite. You know this cliche. They start reading it and are stopped by pure luck as Dixie randomly does some aileron rolling backflip or something, dropping the letters for the Kongs to catch. Polly Roger attempts to steal the coconut but ends up with the book instead that cures the curse, and now Cranky uses the coconut's power to... HOLOGRAM ANYWHERE ON THE ISLAND! Uh, apparently this is a thing. I clearly don't understand Donkey Kong lore. 
But back to DK and Diddy, they do the same thing trying to convince Candy not to read, and she almost does until Funky's plane luckily swipes at her. What an, un what an ex machina. Kincaid now with the book learns of spells he can now cast at anyone he wants, freezing them, making them dance, everything. And Cranky spots it too in his hologram teleporting. The logic of this world has really just gone off the rails, hasn't it? Back to DK's quest, it's Bluster's time. Apparently wanting to read it randomly in the middle of the day. Don't think about it. And with DK wanting the letter, Bluster avoids him as much as possible. Mission failed, I guess. Here's a detour back to King K, who's doing nothing, but he's enjoying the moment so much he has a song for us all. I'm gonna skip it, for your benefit. DK and Diddy tail Bluster to a tree in the jungle and trick the letter out of his hands. They've got them all. Except for one, Cranky Kongs. So on that cliffhanger as we enter Act 3, how's our real finale coming along? Well, after the funny fool of Clump the General, Diddy, DK and Candy are having a banana picnic in the jungle, where Cranky finds them surprised that they're not in the Orchid Valley. Whoa, Bluster lied before? <laughs> That's such an easy gag, but it always gets me. And Cranky is apparently so exasperated that he can't formulate his words. That's the gag of this whole scene. No, it's not very good. And Bluster leaves pretty quickly, creating that love potion come nighttime. He's so enamored at the thought, it's his song number now. Honestly, it's probably the most fitting example in the whole series. And King K overpowers the moment by trapping Bluster and using the potion for himself. They then find Candy randomly in the middle of the jungle at night, apparently, and spray her. I was about to ask, your place or mine? Oh god, the hormones in this show. The Kongs try to work out what Bluster was up to and eventually realise they can just ask the coconut. And learning of the news, DK rushes out to Bluster. Did this really take all night? Back at the lair, Clump has sobered up from his experience last night, teaching everyone the rule that the potion has a time limit. But King K just sends Candy to grab the coconut for him anyway without giving her another dose. Logic. So DK finds Bluster in his cage state. He didn't move at all all night. Positively twitching with bad animation anger. And then leaves just as quickly when he hears the King K news. Bluster now chooses to free himself and tries to be the hero too. And Candy appears at Cranky's. Everyone sure is swip swapping places this episode. I can barely follow it. She laughs at the thought of loving Bluster and announces her love for King K rule and steals the coconut. But like, Diddy Kong witnesses all of this. But then Candy just makes it back safe anyway. Okay. DK comes flying onto the scene and... Oh yeah, that's been his catchphrase this whole time, by the way. With DK overpowered, King K is triumphant, so it's time for the next song number. Spotlight and all. Really, it's just any excuse to not actually use the coconut, I think. But as the episode comes towards its end, let's do one final loop, the finale of all three episodes. With DK weakened, Funky Kong appears in his plane for the first official time, offering to take him to the Mellow Yellow Plantation. Man, is this meant to be a euphemism? I can't even tell. Well, it's banana heaven, and DK has to eat as many as he can to get his strength back. Then it doesn't work. Meanwhile, Cranky is an alchemist now, apparently. This is also a running theme in some future episodes, and he builds a potion that'll cure DK. So I don't know why he let him fly off with Funky in the first place. Candy and Bluster are on the case, and King K is doing a speech and nothing else really. With Bluster struggling on the mission in the middle of the jungle, he sabotages the antidote so that Donkey Kong can be out of his hair. He's just not one for politics. And doing so grows a massive banana tree that I guess rebirths all the other trees again? This was supposed to be in his stomach? Anyway, one more special banana now revives his hair. This plot point really just fell through, didn't it? Now he's strong, he crashes into the lair, kicks the coconut perfectly back into place, and beats up Crusher off screen, because I realise this show doesn't actually have the budget and tech to do a properly done action sequence. <laughs> wow. And with an incredibly bright light source masquerading as the sunset, DK goes to Candy's birthday event where she gives him a present, and he can't tell the difference between the two candies. And that's your ending. Episode 1 is over, and the plot really didn't make that much sense in the second half. How's episode 13? So Congo Bongo is doomed with one letter unaccounted for, and King K is continuing to do absolutely nothing, playing with all of his newly discovered spells even more. Though, actually, I discovered in that dance sequence we skipped last time, there's literally a quick frame in the middle of it of the camera legit glitching and turning to the side, revealing the geographical errors from what's off screen. Whoa. 
obviously the camera is keyframe too, and here there's just one long piece. It also explains why so many shots are just not filled right. They're not planned frame to frame, it's animated to move into the right shot. Kinda. Anyway, eventually King K spots Cranky's letter in the book he got, and Cranky's hologram taunts and distracts him. And even Polly Roger knows of the danger of the curse. But in a genuinely smart move, K Rule threatens to read it unless they give him the coconut in a deal. DK and Diddy silently appear in the lair, and King K reads it quickly, expecting there to be more. The island is now set to sink. And out of character now, DK is calm, having an actual big brain plan, remembering that there's a cure in Cranky's book. Wouldn't it make more sense for like this to be Diddy's idea or something? So after a nonsensical scuffle with Polly Roger and King K trying to stop saving the island and themselves, even though they're also scared, DK eventually dives for the book. What a powerful ending. In reality, he says the curing words that are incredibly basic. Read these words and you will see your island is no longer cursed. And the day is saved. Time to walk away happily as K Rule's troops are trapped in their circusy antics. Oof. Even with a high stakes plot like that, the ending sure feels. easy. Let's hit that real finale now, shall we? So this too goes as you'd expect, with Candy now sobering up from the love potion amongst the songly delays, and then being sprayed again. Huh, I guess that's at least a little bit new to the usual cliché. But with Diddy and Cranky appearing now, it's revealed that a second spray will cause not love, but hatred. What follows next is a sporadic spray of everyone being flip-flop between love and hatred. Cranky and Diddy take back the coconut, Crusher is joined in the spray fest, and King K is Looney Tunes reverse Uno carded into accidentally spraying both his men with anger. I don't know when DK sobered up to help, but apparently he did. And the spray runs out. King K is defeated by his own men. And Bluster tries to escape with the Barrel of Love potion, only to be attacked by Candy herself, and falls in love with his reflection. Though, wait, when did Candy sober up again? Was it because she was sprayed by DK? Shouldn't she be distract- ah, uh, whatever. This is the closest thing to a legitimately good ending to the bunch. I'll just let it be. So the coconut is returned, Candy has a weird sharp shadow on her, and says that she's always DK's girl. And here's another shot of Bluster and himself. And that's the ending of the entire season. Woof. Was watching the whole season worth it? No, there is no arc. It's just the same foundation with some new toppings every time. It's strange, because on one hand, I can totally admire trying a 3D animation show at such an early time, clearly everything was new and it was like a first time thing. But man, so much of the execution went wrong. The camera shots are off, the audio is terrible, and the animation really doesn't do it any favours. The fact that this was popular and got a second season just amazes me. What does that even look like? Ah! Turn it back! It, it's got a little redesign, but I think I've seen more than enough! I really don't have any more to say about it. It's just an incredibly ugly show with an incredibly bonkers take on the universe, songs that make no sense and are presented awfully with jokes that are scattered in that are 90% falling over and 10% eh. If I was a meme lord, I'm sure I could find a million cursed gifts inside this series, but as I am right now, I think I'd best have a break. I'm Congo bongoed out. What even were those DK teeth? And I had to watch a baby DK that looks like that, and a baby King K that's just shrunken down? And Bluster's just wearing cuffs, like where's the shirt play? Oh, so many questions. For now, my name's been Daz, you didn't really care, and I'll see you in a bit. I'm glad that's over. I have a feeling a lot of people would be interested in watching season 2 for themselves, so do come and join me doing it live. I guess I can't really do a VOD of this because it will be entirely just my camera that gets recorded, so uh, catch it while I can, I guess. If you haven't been quenched enough from this alone, you better see it while you can.